As a new year is coming upon us, maybe one of your new year's resolutions is that finally, for realsies this time, this year is gonna be the year that you're gonna release your own first game, or maybe your second one, I don't care. The first one that will be commercially viable at least. So in this video, this is going to be your roadmap for the next coming year of how are you actually going to become a game developer. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I've made a video on this channel before of doing it in three months, but that is not realistic. That is not for everybody. This goal, one year, even if you're doing this just a few hours a week, you should be able to release something by the end of the year and have a game that you can look back upon and be filled with pride. So if this is the first video you're watching on this channel, we're game developers, we've made our first game Forge Industry before, that we made all of the numbers public for, we're working on our next game and we want to inspire as many other game developers as possible to get onto the world of game development because it's just really fun and if you look at it with a business point of view, you can actually still make some money out of it. Now, I'm not going to sell you that you're going to get $150,000 in publisher funding for your first game or it's going to sell 5 million units like Stardew Valley did. Those aren't like the most realistic, but what I can give you is a month by month blueprint of what are the things you need to do? What are the steps you need to take? And what makes a good game? How do you market it? How do you build it? How do you prototype it? So this video is going to be a bit of a hyper mashup of all of the different videos we've made on our channel before. If you wanna go into deeper detail about something I've mentioned in this video, there's probably a video related to it that I've made before. I'll put a card up there for whatever video that is gonna be, but let's just get into it. There are a few ground rules that I wanna set though. The first is that this is going to focus on PC games, more specifically Steam, because that is what I know best. I know there are a lot of indie developers out there as well who wanna make mobile games. I have my thoughts upon that, but in reality, I don't have enough experience with it and I feel like mobile is a very cutthroat market, much harder to market than Steam and also much harder to get big commercial success on it. So if you're planning on making a mobile game, you can look at these steps, but they won't fully apply to you. The second thing is that if you're going into this as a full-time game developer already like we are, this is going to be a very slow timeline. I think you can then compress this video into about six to nine months because you'll just have so much more time and focus than someone who does this on the side a few hours a week. Probably not that many of you who are watching this video do have the opportunity to work full time on your game, but if you do, it's gonna be a game changer in terms of how much work you can actually get done. And then another thing, if you can do this not solo, I know most of the people who watch our channel are solo developers. Solo development is once again going to slow you down a lot. Yes, you have full creative control, you know everything about your game inside and out, but there's only so many hours in a week and by having one or two friends maybe who are somewhat interested or have some skills, if you just band up together, you can already do infinitely more than if you just go at it solo. You'll have someone to hold you accountable, you'll have someone who you can share the load with, and when you go through that valley of despair, which is a very common stage in game development, you won't be the only one going through it. So if you can, find a friend who maybe also at one point in life was like, hey, we should make a game at some point, send them this video, or just be like, hey, yo, you wanna make a game together? Let's do it. And it's gonna help you a lot the next year. And then lastly, I'm not gonna talk about specific engines, specific languages, specific tools, because they don't matter. Use whatever you want. Take Unity, take Unreal, take Godot. Just don't take custom engines, please. It, no, you like it, but it's gonna slow you down way too much to actually release something in a year. Same with tools. I don't care if you use Maya or if you use Blender or if you use A-Sprite. Doesn't matter, depends on your game, depends on your skill set, but everything can make a good game. Don't let an engine or another tool limit your belief of how good your game's gonna be. This was a bit of a long intro, but let's actually get into the meat of this video. So January, the first month, what are we gonna do? We're going to plan our game. What I want you to do is to write down your game ideas. You probably have some floating around in your head. Otherwise, you, I don't think you would be watching this video if you didn't know what you wanted to make. Usually you have like some dream of a game that maybe you played back when you were younger and it like never has been remade again. Or maybe it's this idea that you're like, hey, this could be really cool, really innovative where you like smash two genres together that you haven't seen done before. Doesn't matter what it is, what your game genres are, what your settings are. What I want you to do is in the description down below, there's going to be a template for a one-page game design document. I've made a video about it here as well, where you're going to write down the core parts of your game. Game design documents can be a very controversial topic because they can be very big, very bloated, 
and very hard to update, I don't think you should do that, but a one pager is a really good solution to get a quick overview of what's the game about, what would my main mechanics be, why should people care about it? And like, what is the setting gonna be? What is the price that I wanna aim at? Give some visual inspiration and just get an idea more visual, especially if you're working in teams, this is crucial of, this is the vision I wanna go to. Your main goal for the entire month now should basically just be do research about, okay, I have these possible game ideas, they're in these genres. Let me play some of these similar games to just figure out how does the genre work? How deep do these games go? What's something special about them that maybe you can't see at the start? And you're going to commit by the end of this month on one game idea. If you have more than three game ideas or more than however many, write all of them down, but don't let them keep floating around in your head. Pick a single game idea, and this is going to be your baby for the next 12 months. It's gonna be a long pregnancy, but you really need to be able to focus on just one thing. So many developers go wrong in infinitely prototyping seven different games and then just never releasing something. Now, one pitfall I see often as well is that you're not real with yourself. You're not realistic about what you can do. You have to remember, I think for most of the people watching this, this will be their first game that is maybe like not a game jam or not a prototype that is never finished. Do you know how artistic you are and how good at programming you are and like at marketing or whatever? If you are really good at art, but you're horrible at programming, then you probably shouldn't make a game that is very deep with complex mechanics and a lot of programming. If you're great at programming, but you're horrible at art, then you probably can't really make a cozy, cute city builder game, but instead you should go for something that's very deep, like what we did with Forge Industry, and just focus on the mechanics first, like make it go very deep the game, but maybe not the prettiest. And I can hear you say already, but what if I'm bad at programming and I'm bad at art? Well, then just focus on making something that is fast paced and fun. Those should be your main goals. A really good example of a game that you can sell still, even if you have not that many skills, is something like I Am Jesus Christ. Look at the game. I'll put some footage of the game up right now. It looks janky as hell. It probably is janky as hell, but this game is probably going to make more money than you can ever imagine the moment it launches just because of how viral it could go because of how it looked even though it doesn't look the greatest the plot of hey i'm jesus is going to sell also certain genres are better than others i'm not going to go too deep into this but a linear game for example if you make more of a narrative driven game will mean that you can't reuse assets that often which means that you know you'll just have to do more asset creation often because once you go to a certain stage you never go back to it if you're just gonna look at what are the best possible genres, I only wanna make money and I wanna market my game, what should I make then? Go for a horror game or like a city builder, a settlement thing, like crafty building games is what Chris Zukowski said. I asked him this question recently of what are the best genres to start with and he said horror games or crafty building games because Steam loves both of them and they're also, well, the horror games at least aren't that hard to make. If you can, avoid 2D platformers because the market for those is very oversaturated and it's not hot at all anymore. And then also, if you can, try to avoid VR games or multiplayer games because they add a lot of complexity that honestly you can do without and you can still make a great game. I'm not gonna kill you if you go for any of the genres that I don't recommend. We've made plenty of genre tier lists at this point where we go further in depth into the different genres you can make as an indie developer. So you can once again, check it out there. You've got your idea nailed down. This can take a week, this can take a month, depending on how deep you go. If it just takes a week, that's fine. That means you just have three extra weeks to start the next stage, which is the prototyping stage. What I want you to do here is just take your game design document where you had written down, this is what I want my game to be and open a new project. I'm just gonna say Unity for sake of, I work in Unity, it's easier for me to say, but it can be any engine. Open a new Unity project and just throw stuff at it to find out what works. Don't make anything new, really. Use as many assets as you can, especially for things like models or art or even full on code frameworks. Like if you're going to make a city builder, there are frameworks that are like complete city builder toolkits already that you just import and you already get a basic city builder. Also something I see a lot of our audience struggle with is if you're a programmer first, you're going to want to overcomplicate your code in this prototyping stage, this month, I just want you to write code as fast as possible and don't really care about how is this going to scale in the long term. Your goal now is to make something playable, but not something you will ever ship. This is just where you're going to go and validate how am I gonna make my game fun? Because things are gonna change. Something you write down on paper that seems like a good idea, 
may actually be horrible and like very unintuitive the moment you put it into a game engine. That's why I want you to prototype this for at least a month. Just build up to like making a mini crappy version of your game just to figure out, okay, how would it look somewhat? Like what is the style I wanna go for? Is it 2D, is it 3D, is it top down? Then also figure out what are the main mechanics going to be like. You should generally, you have about like three to five big mechanics that your entire game revolves around. So for example, for Forge Industry, is the system of the routes, where we had the dynamic routes between workers. It's our crafting system. And then it was the entire marketplace system of simulating supply and demand in the background. Those were our big mechanics and everything else was like surrounding that. Focus on getting those first big ones implemented as fast as possible to just figure out, is this fun? Once you've realized that, hey, this game has potential, then only we move on to the next stage. And this is what I'm gonna call the demo grind. So what I want you to do now is you take the project that you had originally made and you're just going to delete it. Well, don't delete it, but you're not going to touch it anymore. You're gonna start a brand new project now that you know what are the different parts that you need to program or you need to get art for, and you're gonna start with a fresh slate because the prototyping code should be very messy, shouldn't be scalable. It should just be basically quick fixes to get everything working, but that is not something you can build upon. One of the biggest mistakes we did with Forge Industry was keep building on our prototyping code, which has cost us literal months of development time because we had to refactor things or certain mechanics that we wanted weren't possible with our previous implementation because we hadn't prototyped all the different mechanics we wanted at first, but we kept adding them on through our development. So you're starting a brand new project and now what I want you to do is not make the full game immediately. What I want you to do is what in the business is called a vertical slice. This is a 10 to 15 minute usually build of your game where you showcase the main mechanics, where you showcase this is the vibe I wanna go for, these are the core gameplay loops that I wanna have, and that is your main focus. One great example of this is our next game that we're working on, Songs of Everjade, where there are three different stages that you will go through and do combat in. But honestly, between the garden stage and the temple stage, sure there will be different enemies, but the main gameplay loop will not change. So for now, we don't touch two of the three stages. We only focus on a single stage and getting all of the mechanics implemented because we are still working towards that vertical slice where we just showcase a certain part of gameplay with all of the mechanics that we really wanna have. Now, of course, the 10 to 15 minutes that I said depends very heavily on your genre as well. If you're making a procedurally generated roguelite, 15 minutes of gameplay is gonna be very easy. If you're making a linear story-based game, 15 minutes is a lot harder to do, so ballpark something like that, but I wouldn't go below five minutes at least. And like I said, make the focus be the mechanics, not the like whole scale of the project. Let's say you have a hundred items in your game, just implement 10 of them and then leave the other 90 for later on. You don't need 100 items to immediately sell the vision. Speaking of selling the vision, let's say around April, after you've spent like one month of development already, it's time to get that Steam page up. Get this up as soon as possible once you have something that is screenshotable, basically. That should be one of the things you need to keep in mind. In April, you want to get the Steam page up. Will you get a lot of wishlists the moment you get your Steam page up? No, not at all. That's something that we've learned by now as well. But having that Steam page allows you to send people somewhere. If you're doing a playtest of your game, if you're making videos about it, if you're making like little GIFs showcasing your work, you have somewhere to send people to already. This is going to stack up a lot. A mistake I see a lot of developers make is fear that their game isn't ready yet to be put on Steam, but I don't think this is a true statement because you can update your Steam page. And if Steam believes that your game is good for like a certain Steam user, even if they like go through the discovery queue and it gets shown once, but they're like, and this isn't for me. If you update your Steam page and Steam is still like, hey, I still think this game is a good fit for this user. They'll be shown it again and again until they finally one day are like, hey, actually, I do kind of like this game now. They seem to be updating things. So don't be scared to get that store page up early. You're not gonna get that many wish lists yet because you're not fully marketing it yet, but it will slowly add up and it could be like maybe another 100, 200 wish lists that just passively stack up without having to do that much. Now, quickly, you're probably gonna ask, how should I make that Steam page? As of right now, when this video is being made, I haven't made a full in-depth video about it yet, but be sure to head down below and subscribe because in the coming two weeks, I'm going to make a video about how do you make that store page? What should you watch out for? What are some good practices? And what are some things that you should just avoid with that store page? So look forward to that one. 
And then by June, July, you should be finished with this little vertical slice, with this demo. And this is when you put it on that Steam page. And this is also where your real marketing grind begins. So you now have a somewhat finished state of the game where most of the gameplay and the fun should be there already. It's just not going to be as long or as pretty as your end goal is going to be. That is fine, but this is the point in time where you can start reaching out to influencers because this is where the big marketing is going to come in. It's not going to be from press releases on IGN because that's only gonna happen if you already got big coverage somewhere outside of like gaming sites. If this demo has gone all right, if it's just on there, don't expect like big blowups yet, but this should mean that your mechanics of your game are getting there. They're not going to be perfect, don't get me wrong. There's still going to be plenty of bugs, but what you should then focus, like let's assume you released the demo in July, what you should do from then on is focus on quantity and on the experience. So quantity is simply like how many levels, how many items, how many enemies, how many bosses, things that are pretty easy to scale, but don't take a lot of programming work, don't take a lot of writing work. It's just more of what you've already done. You're not breaking new ground there. And then also start looking into doing some play tests where you're really looking at what are users expecting of my game in terms of the UI, in terms of interacting with it, and how do I make this as smooth as possible? I'm gonna be honest, this is going to be a pretty boring part and it's also where you're gonna get that value of despair. We had this at least with Forge Industry. It's like, okay, we have 20 items implemented, we still have 680 to go and you're just sitting there like, why did I make this live decision? But this is simply part of game development. Now, ideally this period should take another three to four months at most so that by the end of October or like somewhere in November, you can actually release your game. Now, throughout this period, when you're working on the quantity, keep marketing, keep sending out emails to influencers, keep updating your demo pages, keep posting GIFs of your game to like Reddit or whatever, but aim for a launch somewhere by October, November. And now you're maybe going like, but Marnix, you said I was gonna make it in one year. Can't I wait till December 31st? No, because you need to remember when you press the release button on Steam, it's not over. No, no, the fun is now beginning because suddenly, Assuming you have like some wish list at least and people actually buy your game, there are going to be a lot of bugs that you hadn't prepared for. There's going to be a lot more feedback than what you could have gotten through things like playtests and demos. Of course, obviously, do playtests, do demos, but they're not going to catch everything. Once your game goes public, basically, and anyone can play it, there will be some guy who has like a random potato PC that has like some weird configuration of graphics driver and CPU, which for some reason causes Windows to throw kernel panics because of your game. And you're just sitting there like, eh? And you have to deal with that because the person has bought your game and you should support them. You shouldn't pump and dump your games. You should provide support and you should listen to your community as well. We spend another three months after launching Forge Industry, even more, just working on UX improvements, reworking our tutorials, listening to our community, and actually implementing our changes. This allows you to, you know, first of all, show that you're still active as a developer, which in turn will translate to more sales because people who go by your store page, they'll see that, hey, this game is actively being updated. Maybe there's some community discussions. Oh, the developer is active. It gives them a lot more confidence that maybe even if the game isn't 100% what they thought the moment they bought it, they can see that, hey, I just make a post and maybe it'll get there. And maybe you still wanna continue working on your game as well. That's perfectly fine as well. Maybe you don't go into early access. It's just, I'm gonna make some DLC. I'm gonna make updates or whatever, but have some time for that as well. Your troubles aren't going to disappear the moment you press release. Keep that in mind. That is why I want you to release a little bit earlier because I wanted to fit all of this in a single year. And then I think two months of post-launch support is already pretty good. I think that's at least the bare minimum. Of course, if this game is a massive hit already, you probably won't need to like immediately switch to a different genre or a new game idea, but you can actually sustain just making updates for the game you already released because, you know, people talk about your game, the community is growing. That is very much an option still, but if your game doesn't really sell that well, I would still give it two months just to wrap it up nicely, and then just make sure that you don't set any bad blood as a developer by just abandoning a project and not being transparent about it. And then the year is over and you can watch this video again and do it all over again. So I know this is still a very high level video, but game development is a very big undertaking. Don't underestimate this. I'm going to do my best to link different sources of previous videos I've made down below. Things like how do you price your game as well? That's something I haven't touched upon, but you probably have questions about. I'll put those in the description down below as well. I think we have some pretty good videos on this channel about specific problems you have, similar to like scoping. 
I could make this like a four hour video if I really wanted to, but now I do wanna take one little moment to pluck myself. If you feel like 2024 is going to be the year that you become a game developer and you like this video, you like what I'm saying, you think that I have something to teach you, consider going to our Patreon. On our Patreon, we offer a tier where you can get private coaching where I will look at your specific use case, your specific game idea, and I will sit down together with you and make a plan on how do we actually make this game a reality. It's $35 a month, you get monthly coachings with me. You also get a bonus video every week alongside with a much deeper look at how does a game studio business actually work. So not just making games, but how do we actually monetize it correctly? How do we sustain it? How do we work efficiently, keep making progress? How do we deal with struggles coming our way? So I do think it can offer a lot of value as well. Apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope 2024 is going to be the year that you break through because I want to see you succeed. Don't make the same mistakes that we did and by the end of 2024, I expect an email of you saying that your game has released. That's all I have to say. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!